We're so glad you joined us. We're going to be talking about feminism. There'll be no bra burning, though. Kissing and fighting. And that's just some of the topics. It's all sisters all the time. <laughs> To all of you at home, we are sister to sister. So glad that you're with us today. I'm Kathy, our sisters, Corey, Roxanne, Flo, and Amy. We tackle the tough questions, real questions, from a biblical perspective. So you're going to love this. Girls, you ready? Because oh, we're ready. We were born Fe ready. <laughs> you are born ready, yeah. Miss A. Listen to this question, because I think you all are going to have something great for us. Feminism. Flo alluded to that. But does that devalue motherhood? Has the feminist movement? Duh. I, I really think I that there is common ground with fe the feminist and the Christian, especially in Peter when it says that women and men are equal heirs to the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And his sport, spirit has been poured out on all flesh. Mm -hmm. And there is a part of parenting that's called attachment parenting that biology and psychology has embraced, which says that the female body was made, the biology supports the fact that childbearing and the psychology supports the yeah. fact of bonding with the child early in infancy. I'm so following I you. Are you think, following? Yeah. Okay. I think in the end, the truth will prevail and triumph. Well, what's interesting, have you ever heard feminism and Christianity put together like that? I haven't. Oh, absolutely. That's good. I think somewhere along the line, equal rights turned into sameness. And I don't right. think that's what it's about. I think that we can have equal rights, but still have very different roles as men and women. Are there crossovers? Yes. But I do think feminism has devalued motherhood. I do too. For the very, I mean, just the very fact that women are getting married later and our bodies are only made to make babies for a certain amount of time. So that's why we're having so many fertility issues mm -hmm. and women are having to fight their instinct, not all of them, but to, to want to be mothers because they have to have these careers right. and climb the ladder and fight equality. I just, I think it has devalued well, who's motherhood. Who's the movie star that wrote, I'm looking for my Prince Charming, every woman needs Kirsten a Prince. Kirsten Dunst. Dunst. Okay, well yeah. she's a big time. Yeah. I, I think, you know, growing up, my mom and dad were like, Amy, the sky's the limit. You can do right. anything, Amen. anything that you put That's your right. hand to is going to prosper. And so to have that down deep on the inside of you and then to grow up and be like, well, you can't, you can only be a stay at home mom saying that that's only success or just going into business is success. Why can't we be a great mom and a great business girl? Why can't we be whatever right. God has called us that's uniquely right. designed to be? But Amy, one whatever group, that looks one like. group honestly fights with the other group. It's terrible. Yeah. When I, and I'm sure at home you've experienced this or maybe you're identifying with what we're talking about. When I was the shop and save lady and I was in a grocery store at one time and a little girl was doing some homework sitting on the bench and I said, oh, Oh, let me see what you're doing. And then the mother said, oh, I wouldn't think you would even know about homework because you're on TV. Oh. Mm. No, really. So I believe that women that stay home deserve the attaboy mm. and deserve to yeah, be raised absolutely. up. And women that work, go for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that it, it, a lot depends on you. Your perception is your reality. And so depending on what your perception and understanding about feminism is, is going to be how you process it and how you walk it out. And so I really like how God just used Roxanne mm -hmm. to bring some insight mm -hmm. into it. I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and seeing how the two, because seeing how the two mm -hmm. can coincide. Mm -hmm. But um, I also believe that my other sisters brought up some valid points. And so I really think the perception of mm -hmm. it is key because that's going to, it'll manifest in your walk. Mm -hmm. I do think it's important that as you know, the word says, this you ought to done, have done and not leave the other undone, you know? And so mm -hmm. um, we do need to not allow the spirit of oppression to come on us as women mm -hmm. and define who we are according to the world standards. Right. But we do need to not allow um, 
the world to dictate to who us are. who right. we are. Mm -hmm. And um, I really feel that as women, that's a gift that we have. And we don't want that smothered out by the world. No. I was thinking about my daughter when she was like three years old and she was playing in her little house outside and, and she was serving us food and we said, oh, thank you, what a great waitress. She goes, I'm not the waitress, I'm the girl that owns this place. Oh, That's right. Wow. And I was like, you know, it's in her to be a leader, oh, but it's also in her to be a great I, mom. I have, yeah. a so, yeah. I have a picture of my daughter playing office. Now she yeah. didn't play yes. house, yeah. but she yeah. loved to play office. We Where'd she get that teacher. from? We played teacher. Yeah. We are played teacher, but I didn't want to be a teacher, no way. But what I would like to teach our children is to not use such foul language. What oh, yes. in the world is going on? The foul language on television, that's permitted. Mm -hmm. That's the terrible, terrible part. So yes. how do you think this has had an impact on our world right now? I think there's no question that we have been thoroughly desensitized, oh, it's awful. you know, right. and um, whether you do it in your home or not, it's, it's penetrating their ear gate via the media so mm -hmm. many different ways, mm -hmm. television, music, right. um, all of that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, my father used to have an expression and it was an ignorance man's way of expressing himself right. is through cussing. I love that. You know? and That's so the wisdom of flow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice, the nice. Flow zone. The flow zone. Right. So when you lack vocabulary, you right. lack the ability to express yourself, you will resort or retreat to that manner of conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly not becoming right. um, of us as Christians. And, the, and, the, and right. the Bible says bad company corrupts, corrupts good, good morals. morals. That's right. So My if you are exposing yourself to bad language, what is going Which to come to you? It's inescapable. It's, 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 it's in the music, yeah, it's, it's in the it's movies, really, it's on the TV. It's like on our normal family TV channels. It is. True. What they're allowed Definitely. to say now th that they didn't say when our parents were, and I was little. It's a big difference. <laughs> Big difference. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm, and yes. they're really, they're designing their world with their words and these words of hate. And I think about my little son, Judah, he's six. He said, mom, I said five cuss words this week. I said the S word. And I said, what is the S word? He goes, stupid and shut up. Okay. <laughs> That's what you do. Pastors kids. Shut up or okay. Yeah. Kind of, but not really, yeah. but kind of, you know, in this weird way. Oh, Amy, you have to be so That's proud. So you have to be so, I'm so proud of my children too, but mm -hmm. what do you do when your children move in together? Mm -hmm. What if you have a son mm -hmm. and, and, and they move in together? And what do you do? The world is saying that it's okay. Mm. How old is too old to spank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'll be moving in with you, or Good one, you know, Amy. I'm stepping. I'm going to step in the middle of that as much as I can, because that's just a path that's probably not the healthiest path for them. Right. But look at what's happened in the world. Yeah, God it's talks the norm. about yeah. Jesus. The God says to us in Isaiah, "Come, let us reason together." Mm -hmm. There's a point in your child's life where you do have to use a fair amount of reasoning with them. And I read uh, an article at Crosswalk.com that quotes the American Sociological Review, which some people who live together don't want to read. Dissolution I'm not, rates. I've never even heard of it. Dissolution <laughs> rates of those who cohabit prior to marriage are nearly 80% higher right, right. than right. those who do not. That's right. We have to show them the facts, the statistics about what they're setting themselves up for. Failure. Why do they, they feel like they have to live together to get to know each other, right. sleep together before they get married. Right. Because the world that mindset. Has, yeah. I, I believe the world has um, prioritized things differently. And so even though um, we have the word, see, we're committed. We've given our lives to the Lord right. and we are, are allowing mm -hmm. the Lord the uh, opportunity to work in us. Mm -hmm. We're yielded. Right. But right. your children are still shaping. Their, their wills are still being shaped. Their spirit is still developing. And so <laughs> they are influenced by the world a little more. Right. But right. they're you know? saying right. how, uh, how they need to know each other before they get married. Right. The thing people do not realize today, I think, is that we're all imperfect. There are going to be problems. Right. Right. That, that's why the divorce rate is so high. Right. As soon as a problem comes in, it's like, oh, we're not compatible. Well, do you we all gotta... agree with that? Does the audience agree? This is why, right. with applause, this is why, thank you, this is why the divorce rate is so cuckoo. And out we, of we whack, throw out the of Ten whack. Commandments out. The Seventh yes. Commandment, yes. do I not like, commit an right. I like right. what Joyce right. Meyer said. She said, living together, sleeping together before marriage takes the wow out of the marriage. I like that. And oh, it, it does. I like that. Yeah, hey. Yeah, yeah. But I have but I have another question. Marriage for is you. wow. Oh boy. <laughs> this is our wow girl. Yeah. 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 Everything is wow. 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 But I want to ask
ask you, what does it mean? This is a really good question too, because to be in the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. I think about the verse in the Bible that talk, talks about us being salt, salt yes. in the, and mm -hmm. to, see, to be a seasoning. Salt doesn't have to become the food, it is seasoning. You add the salt and it changes the food, not oh, the salt. Yeah. So that's what we're called to be. Corey, we, did you write that? I did. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah write that down. Right. Somebody. Wait, they're gonna applaud again. <laughs> Thought of that in the car. Yeah. Thought of that in the car. No, seriously, I just think that we we can be, we are in the world. We can't hide. We're in it. And good flavor. But we are a good flavor. We are the the flavor that God gave we us, and we're all a little different flavor. Yeah, th good. this old hymn or old gospel song I sang when I was little, like this world Go is it. not my no, home. No. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Well, I can't remember it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, you can. Well, this old world, this ain't my home. Like we're sojourning That's to get right. to yes. our ultimate home, and right. while we're here, we're going to make a huge difference for Christ, and we're going to be His right. hands and feet on earth until we get to our ultimate destination, which is home in heaven. And we're not going to hide ourselves no. from the world. No. We're going to be out there in the world because Jesus loved the world. He gave his life right. for the world. Right. So we're going to be in that world, mm -hmm. but we're not going to let the culture penetrate us, that it changes us in a negative way. Right. And right. I just want to be what Jesus is for, mm -hmm. not so much what Jesus is against. Right. And I know I've said Good that job. to us yes. before, yeah, and yet as Christians, we, we have a challenge, right. flow. Right. Well, I believe that we are ambassadors passing through. And mm -hmm. I think an ambassador represents mm -hmm. well right. where they come from. Right. And um, I agree with everything that has been said. I really believe that we cannot afford to lose our flavor. No, we I cannot love that. allow right. for right. our oil to go low and our light to go dim. Right. Mm, good. I like right. that too. I love, yeah, yes. audience. Audience loves it. Audience loves it. I hope that you like what you've been hearing here on Sister to Sister. And don't go anywhere because we have some more great questions for you with great answers, women real from a biblical perspective. So stay right there. We'll be right back. for the studio audience today. They are fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. You're all gonna love this next question because, and I'm gonna read the whole thing because I want you to understand it. Okay, now this is about kissing before marriage. Flo alluded to that one too. Everyone knows the Duggar family, right? Okay, they're famous for their reality TV show. They have 19 kids and counting and they have great Christian faith. In a recent article, here's what they said. This is their dating rules, okay? This is really tough. No kissing till marriage. Texting is okay, but you have to include your parents in on the text. Dear, Ooh. dear, dear. And um, is this realistic? Dear, dear, dear. Is this realistic? Um, what are your ground rules for your children dating? And what is the best dating advice that you can give to anyone that is watching us today? I'm gonna take those for my dating, <laughs> for my kids. I, for hey, your Gloria, kids, chaperone at all times, include me in that group text yes. of like you and your boyfriend. When, when, yes. I, when no I kissing. looked at yes. that article, it wasn't so much that the parents espoused that the children adopted it. And the parents yeah, permitted yeah. them to adopt it themselves, which I think is counterculture yeah. to what's going on. And I do right. have a scripture for you guys. Really? First Timothy really? 5, 2. <laughs> Men treat older women as mothers and younger Sis women as sisters, sisters with absolute purity. I love it. I'm putting on my kids' wall. Yeah. Somebody tell Demi more <laughs> about that, <laughs> about the older women and younger yeah, men. Right, right. What is she? Right. So I think there is scriptural grounds for them to have this counterculture of what they believe in, and we as Christians can be supportive of what they are espousing because the girls themselves have adopted this. They're dating with a wow. purpose, the purpose for marriage, mm -hmm. not the purpose of performing sexual acts or right. uh, uh, appeasing uh, their own desires. Well, we're all saying good and right, but I just wonder what you're thinking at home because this is a situation, you're saying a counterculture. Right is it realistic is, is the this, question. Look at, yeah. When I was in yeah. high school, there was this book that was really popular in our youth group. It was called I Kiss Dating Goodbye. Yeah. And I hated it because all the boys were like swearing off dating and I'm like, come on. 
Oh Wait, goodness. our audience knows that book. You guys know right. that book? Okay, so I really? hated it, but now that I have kids, I'm all like, give me the book, give me the Duggars rules. All right, we're on that. Yeah, it's... but come on, didn't you like kissing? Yes. I, mean, yeah. I liked kissing. Yes, it I thought great. it was ridiculous. I, if I was a teenager, I would think these rules were ridiculous. But I now, I'm yes. like, they're awesome. Some, yeah. women whose now that bodies, I'm a mom. some women whose bodies have been exploited or permitted their bodies to be exploited mm -hmm. really need that confidence that a man is not after them right. for their own sexual desires. Well, all girls need so, that. Right, right. You know what? I, I don't think this is a debate as much as it is a discussion. And the thing of it is, is that we as believers, and that's with this real life, you know, we're, that's our we're, show, we're, we, right? you know, we're all Christians here. And of course, we want the best for our children. And we want to give them the biblical principles and boundaries. And I believe that that's what the Duggars are attempting to do. I also, we also have to understand that, again, people have a free will. And so as a parent, my job is to help train my child mm -hmm. um, and to train their will. I want them to be willing to be willing, you know, understand? Right. And so I think, you know, uh, we can set rules and boundaries and I think everybody, every decent parent well, we does. We try, we try. But how to implement them. Uh, the children, the child has to be a willing participant. Right. And I think you want the child understanding the value. Even some women don't understand yeah, the value right. of themselves. Right. And it's, uh, my saying is always, if I'm a good thing, God's not going to give me an anything. And I don't have to settle <laughs> That's for another. anything. That's another. That's another. Oh. Oh. understand that you become a bait for anything right. so it's like mm -hmm. when the pressure is on that let's go for because a yes. kiss yes. stirs something <laughs> up in you now I'm not saying that you know I'm hundred percent in agreement with not kissing right. uh, but I understand the principle behind it is what I'm trying to get right. across but I, I grew up with the musical Oklahoma and Ado Annie sang a song I'm just a girl who can't I'm say no that. kissing's my favorite sport <laughs> and that's good it, I say it's possible. But, okay, this so your first, wait, your first kiss was like on when you got married? Yes. I, yes. I, I was going yes. to tell you girls yes. that. Really? She told me with that in a green home with my own husband. How right. did it go? Really cool. right. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right. That is big, big applause for that. That's yeah. really good. But you know what? I, kiss me on the phone. I say if you pay for the oh. cell phone, then you should be in on the text. That's all I have yeah. to say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, what is the best parenting advice? that has been given to you or that you would like to give to you? The best advice that I ever gotten was, um, I remember being 18 and thinking, oh, my family's too strict, they're too this, they're too that. At 18, I can move out. And I can remember my grandmother looking at me and going, just remember, you can always come back. Mm -hmm. And trust me, about two years mm -hmm. later, I was right back. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But I, you know, I, I think that that's, that's really important yes. that they are shown we bear the ministry of reconciliation because they're going to mess up. We've messed up. Mm -hmm. We're going to make mistakes. I'm being tapped to stop so the other sisters can talk. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. No. First of all, that is my little secret. Oh, 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 my my secret. <laughs> oh my gosh. I say this. Children learn more from what we do than what we say. That's right. That's that, right. And, and I mean, I have to bring a Bible verse in. Go ahead. Go I have to. Proverbs 27. Love it. I'm sorry. Proverbs 22, 6. I'm cheating. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart right. from it. Amen to that. We have that and in, in our The reason wall. I'm tapping is I really want to get to the next question because it's so. All right. <laughs> we won't, we won't I'm sorry. It's my <laughs> secret <laughs> tap. I am, I'm going to do more than tap you. Oh, no. <laughs> next time. Here's what I want you to. Here's what I want you to talk about. A Y S adults. Oh my God. No, it's I love my sister so tap. much. It was a love. It was a love tap. Love, it's love. It's gonna be a love punch. Here's what I want to talk about because it is so in the news and so important. And it's about the recent school violence. Mm, and we yes. are in suburban mm. Pittsburgh, so mm -hmm. we experience this in a big way. Your school district, Corey. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you tell your child if they're being bullied? And do you fight back? Should you tell your child fight back? I think this is such a hard question. It's a hard question. Because we've got the turn the other cheek mm -hmm. verse. That's but right. then, you know, my husband and I have talked about this. We're not, I don't think our kids are meant to be punching bags either, you know? And I, I don't know. I want to know what you guys say. For yeah. once, I actually am like, well, no. I need, I need to know. You have no I, don't think you, I don't think you teach your child to... Uh, 
to fight, but you should teach them how. And what I mean by that is <laughs> all fighting, I, I, no, or just like that. all fighting is not no. physical. Right. So, and we're living in a right. day and age, it used to be, Most you know, not. it used to be in, in <laughs> my time that, you know, if you fought somebody on the playground or whatever, whoever got the best of whoever, and that was it, and yeah. you, you were done. Now right. they're, they're fighting with knives and guns. They're taking and lives. Texts. They have, and words. They have done words. away with that. And so mm -hmm. when that happens now, you really need to get authorities involved, whether it's the school principal, right. whether it's the counselor, maybe you can maybe you can sit down with a reasonable parent if you can find one. Right, and, right. Um, I love what my son did, and he came home, he said, hey mom, I was saying, who are you sitting by at lunch? And he said, well, I'm sitting by this boy, and I said, oh, that's not your normal friend group, why? Mm -hmm. And he said, because he's being bullied. Oh, and so I'm thought, I was like, yeah. how about we raise that's the kids the yes. clap yeah. that are going yeah. out yeah. to yeah. sit by the bullying yeah. kids? Yeah. And, that's, you know? what, and that's actually what the bullying right. programs in schools, right. they, yeah. they teach the children now to support yeah. the person being bullied, yeah. right. telling them that right. you can help someone else. Right. And children have to be careful. Parents need to know what their school policies say mm -hmm. because right. some policies treat that child that also punches back as equal perpetrators. Right. So and you Roxanne, have to be careful with physical yeah. violence. Or What's physical interesting and what I want um, the, the studio audience to know and our audience at home is Roxanne is an attorney, attorney. but she is also on the school board of her local school. Yeah, right. But before and we before we get out of here and get home, you at home, I want our girls to tell you what is the best gift that you've ever received? And mm -hmm. I think hanging around with pastor's kids would be a great gift. Right. What do you think? What do you have? How did that I, I, can I, I, I asked our producer if I could share this poem. My best gift was a poem from my husband. Okay. For my Valentine. This is from Alan. Aww. You left your home, forsook your dreams. You even changed your name. But through the years, I am the one who's never been the same. You showed me how to laugh and cry. You helped me learn to share and opened up a world of joy I never knew was there. Love must be blind, it has been said, for faults it should ignore. But you have seen me at my worst and love me all the more. Mm -hmm. If my heart could reflect your soul as a mirror does a face, the world would marvel at the sight of beauty, truth, and grace. Wow. Oh God, how I remain amazed that I should have this life, for only I am blessed to claim Roxanne to be my wife. Oh my oh gosh! My gosh. Oh wow! That is that unbelievable. Is beautiful. And so that's, that's my favorite. That, that is, is amazing. I don't think that anyone could really top <laughs> that, that particular gift. So I'm going to say, beautiful. we're going to be right back because Roxanne is coming again. Sister to sister, <laughs> stay right there. <laughs> for being with us here today on Sister to Sister, and we never end without a scripture from Amy. Because the word is the most important thing. Romans 12, 2 in the voice, it says, do not allow this world to mold you in its own image, but instead be transformed from the inside out by the renewing of your mind. And as a result, you will be able to discern what God's will and whatever God finds good, pleasing, and complete. I love that. Did you love that? I did, I love that. Enjoy what we do here on Sister to Sister. And if you would like to contact us, it's very easy. S2S at ctvn.org. Facebook us, we're on Twitter, we're all about it. Yep. We have another saying here. It goes like this: as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of one woman sharpen the other. See you next time on Sister to Sister.